Today we're giving a shout out to 10 awesome and criminally underrated bass players of the 80s and 90s. This is not a top 10, it's just a list of 10 incredible players that I would love to review individually, but for some reason I can't find enough material to make a video on each of them. Number 10 is Rachel Boland, bass player and main songwriter of Skid Row. His growling and aggressive trebly tone with a lot of attack plays a considerable part in making Skid Row way heavier compared to other rock bands of the era. Besides having a great sound, Bolan is very good at adding dynamics by changing the rhythm figure. Let's take Youth Gone Wild as an example. The upbeat accents of the bass push the verses together with the drums, while the guitars play these long open chords. On the chorus, Bolan's pulsing quarter notes make the song take off, before stepping back in the ranks during the solo to leave space to the guitar. Bolan makes also a good use of triplets, like during the verse of In a Darknet Room. While everybody else is playing quarter notes, the single eighth note of the triplet that Rachel plays on the four really gives the song a unique rolling movement. In a dark room, beyond the reach of God's faith. Same thing happens in the verse of Into Another, where the single triplet played by the bass really helps pushing the 7 8 time signature verse. Number 9 is Sammy Jaffa of Hanoi Rocks. Hanoi Rocks were a glam rock band from Finland, formed in 1979. Have you ever wondered where Guns N' Roses got the idea for their early outfit? Well, check out Hanoi Rocks. Sammy Jaffa plays simple and solid rock bass that gave a unique flavor to the early compositions of Hanoi Rocks, like Tragedy or Motivating. After the dissolution of the band, Sammy and singer Michael Monroe joined Billy Idol's guitar player Steve Stevens and formed supergroup Jerusalem Slim. The band broke up only two years later, but managed to release one self-titled album, which in my opinion is an absolute masterpiece, so make sure you check it out. After that, Sammy played with several bands, including Demolition 23 and the New York Dolls, for their 2006 reunion album, one day it will please us to remember even this. Yeah, that's a title. The album is great and features a lot of really good bass-driven songs, such as We're All In Love and Dance Like A Monkey. Number 8. Rex Brown of Pantera. Rex Brown is an incredible bass player and his work with Pantera is extraordinary. Check this out. Whoa! Remember, this is recorded on tape and there are no studio tricks. Rex provided the low ends for Dimebag Daryl's fabulous riffing and had a really good control of the instrument. Rex is a very good and tight bass player that kept up with the guitar most of the time, but also got really creative at times. Check out the awesome bass lines under the solo of 5 Minutes Alone and Floods. Rex was extremely precise and his use of bending, slides and legatos is just perfect. Number 7 is Juan Crucier of Rat. Even though Rat are mainly known for the unique graspy voice of lead singer Stephen Percy and for the superb guitar work of Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby, they also had one incredible rhythm section. Drummer Bobby Blotzer added a unique swing to the songs, while bass player Juan Crucier provided a wall of low frequencies. The first time I heard the isolated track of Round and Round, I thought he was using a pick. But nope, it's the fingers. His timing is impeccable and occasionally he provided some very interesting bass lines. Check out Nobody Rise For Free, Dangerous But Worth The Risk or the Red EP version of Back For More. One also sang really cool backing vocals and yeah, he had the best stage moves of the whole 80s rock scene. Number 6 is Mark Sandman of Morphine. Morphine was an alternative rock group that combined blues and jazz elements with more traditional rock arrangements. The band themselves coined the label Low Rock to describe their music, which involved a minimalist approach, 
built around drums, saxophone, and Mark Sandman's unique bass sound. Sandman usually played a two string slide bass guitar and sometimes a unitar and three strings light bass with one bass and two unison strings tune the octave higher, usually to A. That is pretty original, right? His simple and repetitive bass figures were often built around one or two notes and created a unique hypnotic sound. Two songs you really need to check out are Buena and Super Sex. Number 5 is Jason Newsted of Metallica. We all know the extremely hard task. Jason had to deal with when he joined Metallica. Replace the irreplaceable Cliff Burton. Though Jason is a fantastic bass player, the bass role in Metallica never did justice to his abilities. Jason is a very tight player and you should really go check out his isolated tracks, including the ones in Injustice for All, like Dire Sieve and Blackened. After he fucking left the band, he went on and formed his own band Newstead, where he's rocking some really cool bass lines. Check out the bass part of King of the Underdogs. Number four, Billy Gould of Faith No More. Billy Gould is a great bass player with an incredible driving feel. He uses a variety of techniques, from fingerstyle to slap to pick playing. Especially his pick playing can be so aggressive, it's easily mistaken for slapping. Listen to the bass part of Epic. If you can't, then it doesn't matter anyway. You will never understand it cause it happens to Often he acts as a pedal tone, like in From Out of Nowhere or Land of Sunshine intros, or the epic long guitar solo. Or uses bending and vibrato like in the main riff of All to Pieces or Small Victory. The bass is a real driving force in Faith No More music, and the variety of sounds that Billy gets out of his instrument is intriguing. You hear the bass and you know right away it's Faith No More. Number 3. Alex James of Blur His deep tone is an essential part of the sound of Blur and over the years Alex came out with some really interesting lines. Check out how he sparked some life into the verse of Charmless Man. Not to mention the amazing disco influenced bass line of Girls and Boys. It might sound simple at a glance, but if you try to play it, you'll find out it's not as easy as it seems. The main bass line of Park Life is also pretty interesting. I have always thought that the verse of the song sounds kind of disturbing, and now I know why. While the guitar part revolves around only two chords, E major and A major, the walking bass part moves up and down between E and B, but it's putting an emphasis on the B flat under the E chord, creating the infamous devilish triton interval. Hey. Pretty cool for a pop song, right? Worth mentioning is also the distorted bass line on song 2. There's two basses in the arrangement, so go and check out the isolated track. She's so high and music is my radar also have interesting bass parts. Number 2 is Dana Strom, bass player of Slaughter. Their second album, The Wild Life, is packed with amazing bass lines. Dana's never boring and manages to leave his mark on every song without getting in the way of the vocals or the guitars. His playing is tight as hell and the tone, very fat and round, blends perfectly with the bass drum, melting into one fat pulse through the whole album. Check out the fast pentatonic runs in Reach for the Sky and the pulsing 8 notes and precise slides on Out for Love. Days Gone By is another song where the bass plays a very interesting part. Dana is voicing triads during the verse. And during the chorus, he moves up and down the neck, acting more like a piano, adding great dynamics and a unique classical composition flavor to the song. Number one is Robert DeLeo of Stone Temple Pilots. DeLeo plays with a particularly aggressive right hand, with a clean and confident tone and attack. His use of range is very inspiring. He often reaches for high melodic lines and feels the grab your attention and pick up where another instrument leaves off. He has the unique ability to add suspensions and extensions to the chords, rather than simply playing to the root. 
On plus, throughout the song, he builds parts that rely on the fourth of the chord, resolving to the third, acting like a guitar playing a sus4 chord instead of a classic root note bass line. DeLeo is also very good at picking the right moment to use syncopation. Check how he pushes the verses of Interstate Love Song or Tripping on a Hole in a Paper Heart. On a Sunday afternoon, oh, the and this is it. Let me know in the comments if you think I left somebody out. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.